Welcome to ECN Trade Daily Video. Before we begin, it should be noted that any advice is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Hello everyone, my name is Rob Clayton and thank you for joining me. Well, it was a very interesting round of challenges when it comes to Friday. First of all, the US jobs number came out surprisingly higher with 467,000 jobs added in January, which was triple the forecast of 150. What that was expected. Some economists were even expecting a loss of jobs amid January's surge in coronavirus infections. However, from the uh, stronger number, the uh, US central bank officials have played down speculation that they might raise rates by half a percent in March instead of a quarter. But with the numbers that have come out, we'll have to keep an eye because it could see a couple of interest rate cuts in the forecoming. Therefore, could see the US dollar, which measures the greenback strength against the basket of six major currencies, climb higher after its recent weakness last week, settled around 95.45. Looking at the technical aspect for the Australian dollar, we can see that the market has dropped clearly away from the 60 day moving average, which is now around 71, 70, 90. And also from the plummet on Friday, reached its objective 70.55. I do feel we may see a little bit of profit taking to the start of the week up to about 71, 20, 30, but then another down test. In light of the pattern, I feel that we could be looking not at 70.55, but more to 69, 65, 75 and reassess from there. Interesting to see that the euro took a challenge to the upside briefly, but all on the back of uh, the recent change in tone from the European Central Bank last week, after they indicated that they may potentially uh, look at hiking rates in 2022 which completely reverses the dovish stance that recently was uh, seen or given from President Christina Lagarde. Still, from the technical aspect, I feel the market is a little bit overstretched and therefore could see a retreat from the current levels around 114.70.80, where I've outlined here, and look back towards 114.15 and reassess. The dollar yen is holding its gains since its rebound from the low 114 region and now looks back towards that top side of the range, seeing somewhere around 115.45 and the top, or short term, top that is, at 115.90 figure. Sterling, well, backs away. It didn't quite reach its objective when I was looking around 136.50.60, but instead took profit after its uh, six days, or five and, a, five and a half days, and that is of um, strength, and now puts a bit of a question mark if we've seen a top. Not quite broken down from the RSI. So let's see if the market can sustain above the level of 134.60.70 and take a, a slight retracement back towards the top side, seeing around 135.70 to 136.20. Kajin was weaker, but still trading sideways. And you can see for 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 into the 11th day that the market is not able to reach either side of its ranges. That is of the base around 89.60.80 and the top side around 91.80 figure. In light of the pattern, I'm still bearish. I still feel the market will eventually reach down to that bottom side of 89.60.80. Gold very whipsawed again. You can see that the market even looked at that level of 1,788 on Friday or close to it after stabbing at the lows around 92. The market is still at this point attempting to re and state its upside due to some of the geopolitical risks that is between uh, Russia and Ukraine. Still, not overly bullish. I think the market will eventually take the challenge to the downside. Let's see if we can break that level of 88. And wrapping up with oil, well, the market's posted a fresh seven year high. And still at this point, let me neutral now that we've cleared $90 a barrel. However, looking at the pattern, there is still room maybe to even see a further stretch. We are extremely overbought, but could see a spike at $93 and then maybe see a test down. I don't have a very strong view on this due to the overbought conditions, but due to the recent pattern that we can see here, that um, although I'm neutral, that uh, right, you can't discard at least one more test up. Well, that wraps it for the morning. Thank you very much for joining me. And as always, grab the intro, Paul, and look forward to speaking to you later on today.